10 Common Mistakes That Throw Your Creatine in the Trash and Harm Your Body Creatine is widely recognized as one of the most effective dietary supplements available for individuals seeking to increase muscle mass. Numerous scientific studies have consistently demonstrated its ability to enhance strength, boost power output, and support muscle hypertrophy when combined with proper training and nutrition. Despite its proven benefits, many individuals fail to maximize the potential of creatine due to common and easily avoidable mistakes in its usage. These errors not only diminish the supplement's effectiveness, but may also pose unnecessary risks to the user's health. In this guide, we will explore the 10 most frequent and potentially harmful mistakes people make when using creatine. By understanding and avoiding these pitfalls, you can ensure that your investment in supplementation yields optimal results without compromising your well-being. Additionally, it is important to address a widespread myth. Creatine does not cause hair loss. To date, there is no reliable scientific evidence supporting this claim. The misconception likely stems from misinterpretation of isolated studies and anecdotal reports, but the broader body of research strongly supports creatine's safety for hair health. Make sure to follow along carefully, especially as we approach mistake number five, which happens to be the most commonly made error, and one that could be significantly limiting your gains without you even realizing it. Mistake one, not increasing water intake when starting to take creatine. One of the most common and fundamental mistakes individuals make when beginning creatine supplementation is failing to adequately increase their water intake. This oversight often stems from a lack of understanding of how creatine functions within the body at a physiological level. Creatine operates by enhancing water retention within muscle cells, a mechanism often referred to as the volumizing effect. This effect is essential because it plays a critical role in stimulating protein synthesis, as well as supporting increases in muscle strength and mass. As creatine begins to accumulate within the muscle tissues, it draws water into the cells, causing them to swell slightly. This process supports cellular functions related to growth, repair, and performance. However, when an individual does not proportionally increase their daily fluid intake to match this internal shift in hydration, the body may begin to experience dehydration in other tissues. Even mild dehydration can result in a variety of unpleasant and performance-reducing symptoms, including headaches, fatigue, reduced endurance, and, in more severe cases, strain on the kidneys. To prevent these issues and support optimal results, it is recommended that individuals increase their water intake by approximately 16 to 34 fluid ounces 500 to 1,000 milliliters per day, in addition to their usual consumption. A helpful and simple method to monitor hydration status is to pay close attention to the color of urine. It should remain light or clear, which typically indicates adequate hydration levels. Some athletes and gym goers also report experiencing muscle cramps or discomfort when they begin taking creatine without increasing their water intake. This is often due to the body's need to redistribute its existing water supply prioritizing hydration of muscle tissue, and potentially compromising the hydration of other systems and organs. This imbalance can hinder physical performance and negatively affect overall well-being. In conclusion, increasing water consumption alongside creatine supplementation is not merely advisable, it is essential. Proper hydration enhances the effectiveness of the supplement, supports bodily function, and helps avoid unnecessary side effects. Mistake two, taking creatine on an empty stomach. Another frequently overlooked, yet significant mistake in creatine supplementation is consuming creatine on an empty stomach. While this might seem harmless at first glance, it can substantially reduce the supplement's effectiveness and increase the likelihood of digestive discomfort. Understanding how creatine is absorbed and utilized by the body reveals why timing and food pairing are critical for optimizing its benefits. Creatine absorption is significantly enhanced when it is taken in combination with a source of carbohydrates. The presence of carbohydrates in the digestive system triggers the release of insulin, a hormone that plays a vital role in transporting nutrients into cells, including creatine into muscle cells. This insulin-mediated uptake is key to maximizing creatine's impact on muscle performance and recovery. Research has shown that pairing creatine with approximately 1 to 1 3 quarters ounces 
30 to 50 grams of high glycemic index carbohydrates can increase the rate and efficiency of creatine absorption by as much as 60% compared to taking it on an empty stomach. Ideal carbohydrate sources to combine with creatine include bananas, white rice, sweet potatoes, white bread, or even natural fruit juices like orange or grape juice, all of which cause a rapid spike in blood glucose and insulin, enhancing nutrient transport. Beyond absorption efficiency, taking creatine without any accompanying food can lead to gastrointestinal issues in many individuals. These may manifest as abdominal pain, nausea, bloating, or diarrhea. This occurs because creatine, when ingested alone, can increase the acidity of the stomach and may irritate the intestinal lining, particularly when there is no buffer in the form of food to aid digestion. To avoid these issues and optimize both comfort and effectiveness, it is recommended to take creatine immediately after your workout, ideally with a carbohydrate-rich snack or post-workout meal. This timing not only enhances absorption, but also aligns with the body's heightened need for nutrients during the recovery window. If you typically exercise in a fasted state, such as early in the morning, the best strategy is to delay creatine supplementation until after your training session, incorporating it into your breakfast or post-workout meal, rather than taking it beforehand on an empty stomach. By making this small adjustment, you can significantly improve the effectiveness of your creatine supplementation while avoiding unnecessary digestive discomfort, thereby supporting your overall performance and recovery in the long term. Mistake 3. Ignoring creatine quality to save money. Trying to save money is understandable, but when it comes to creatine, cheap can be very expensive. The quality of this supplement varies enormously between brands. Low-quality products can reduce effectiveness and pose health risks. High-quality creatine undergoes purity tests and contains at least 99.9% .9 creatine monohydrate. Cheaper versions may contain contaminants, fillers, and even harmful compounds. Some studies have found heavy metals and impurities in creatines from unknown or low-cost brands. They also tend to be less soluble, causing more gastrointestinal discomfort and being less efficient in absorption. When choosing your creatine, look for brands with quality certifications, like the Crea Pure Seal, which guarantees high-purity German creatine. Reliable brands usually publish purity test reports and are transparent about their production. Mistake 4 not taking it on non-training days. A surprisingly common mistake is thinking you only need creatine on workout days. This is completely wrong. Creatine doesn't work like a pre-workout. Its effects are cumulative, gradually increasing phosphocreatine stores in the muscles. To maintain high levels, supplementation must be continuous, every day, even when you're not training. Skipping doses causes creatine levels to drop and progress to be lost. Also, Muscle recovery happens on rest days, and creatine plays a vital role in rebuilding and strengthening muscle fibers. Set a daily routine for creatine supplementation, preferably at the same time every day, to form a lasting habit. Mistake 5. Choosing the wrong type of creatine. With so many options on the market, HCL, crealkaline, ethyl ester, buffered, liquid creatine, etc., Many people get confused and pick more expensive or less effective options. The truth is, creatine monohydrate remains the most studied, safest, and most effective form. Other types like HCL are more soluble, but have no proven superiority in results. For those with digestive sensitivity, micronized monohydrate is a good alternative, but it's still just creatine monohydrate, processed to dissolve better. Stick with creatine monohydrate unless you have specific intolerance. Mistake 6. Mixing it in vitamin or protein shakes. Many people mix creatine with protein powder or vitamins. It seems convenient, but it's a mistake. Creatine doesn't dissolve well in thick liquids. Much of it stays at the bottom of the glass, which often gets washed away, meaning you might only consume half the intended dose. Also, mixing creatine with acidic juices or some proteins can cause it to degrade into creatinine, which is less effective. The best way to take creatine is to mix it in room temperature water, stir well, and drink it immediately, or use the dry scoop method, followed by water. Mistake 7. Expecting instant results. We live in an age of instant gratification, and many people expect visible results in a few days. Creatine doesn't work like that. It requires time to saturate your muscles. Most people only see noticeable benefits after two to four weeks of consistent use. For some, especially non-responders, it can take longer. 
The first signs may be small, one or two extra reps, less fatigue, or slight weight gain due to water retention. But the real gains, strength, hypertrophy, happen after eight to 12 weeks of proper supplementation and training. Mistake eight, using the wrong dose more isn't better. After your muscles are saturated, extra creatine is simply excreted. There are two proper dosing methods. One, O, loading phase, 20 grams per day, four doses of five grams for five to seven days, then three to five grams per day. Two, trait maintenance, take three, five grams per day from the start. Saturation happens in three to four weeks. For people over 198 pounds, the maintenance dose can be up to five to seven grams per day. For smaller individuals, three grams per day is usually enough. Avoid excessive doses. They can overload the kidneys, especially if you already have underlying conditions. Mistake nine, not consulting a doctor before taking it. Many start using creatine based on gym advice or influencers without consulting a professional. Creatine is safe for most, but people with kidney or liver problems, history of kidney stones, or neuromuscular diseases should get medical clearance. Even seemingly healthy individuals may have subclinical issues only detectable via blood or urine tests. A doctor, sports nutritionist, or dietitian can integrate creatine into a safe and effective plan. Mistake 10. Not monitoring side effects. Ignoring how your body reacts is a big mistake. Creatine is generally safe, but side effects can happen. Water retention, digestive issues, cramps, bloating, diarrhea, muscle cramps, headaches. If you're swelling noticeably or getting frequent cramps, you may need to adjust your hydration or electrolyte intake. Keep a journal in the first few weeks to track symptoms, weight, and performance. Regular blood tests, creatine, BUN, can ensure your body is handling it well. If you like this and also want to learn about 15 bodybuilding myths you need to stop believing, we've left a video appearing right now on the screen showing and better explaining each of them. Thank you for watching this far. Share your thoughts with us in the comments. See you in the next one.